Hi, thanks everyone for being here. Everyone, all 20 of you. Um, uh, my name is Catherine Spees, and a uh, fighter pilot, yes, but also an experimental test pilot. And I'll be talking today about AR, uh, combat operations, and then specifically experimental flight test. So uh, in the military, maybe we have the advantage that uh, we've been using AR for a while, and we're actually using it in the real world. So we're not talking about using it, we're not talking about building apps, we're not just starting it, we've been doing it for years and we're pretty advanced. Okay, so to start off, some of the things that we care about. So on the right side of the screen here is uh, a heads-up display, which essentially is overlaid on our environment. Um, and in this display, you can see that there's a significant amount of information. And uh, we'll talk through some of what that is, but our primary uh, use for um, uh, AR initially was flight safety. So how do you keep a pilot's head up and provide them information, right? And so uh, we have a lot of missions, but maybe the first thing we shouldn't do is crash the aircraft, right? So uh, flight safety is super important. So things like uh, create, creating an artificial horizon. So um, does this have a pointer? No. Okay, so uh, there's a diagonal line from the left up towards the right. That is uh, an artificial horizon. So right now, this display is at a tilt. So the aircraft itself is in a, in a roll. Uh, across the very top, you actually have navigation information. So currently, uh, the aircraft is headed 170, which is approximately uh, just off of south. Um, and then you can see there's just a lot of other information. Another important one, upper left corner, that's a power setting. It's out of 100%, so something you'd want to know heads up if you're about to you know, uh, pull too much uh, or add too much power and destroy an engine. Um, and on the right side is actually altitude. So there's a number of ways to talk about altitude. We won't go into that, but altitude obviously matters. In this case, they're at 35 feet. So you probably want to have your, heads, your head up and not uh, looking down inside of a cockpit because maybe they're getting ready to land or something. Um, okay, so flight safety is super important. So we don't want to crash the aircraft. Uh, next is navigation. So we talked a little bit about uh, across the top. We've got some information about directions. And then we actually have some information on this screen that tells us like which way to go. So uh, there's two what we call carrots. They're small, um, uh, you know, triangles at the very top pointing. So those things are in indicating two different things. The one on the left, which is just, uh, if we look at that 170 line to the right, there's an enclosed triangle with then two lines on the bottom. That's showing us where tachyons at. That's a navigational device. The one to the right of it is showing us the direction our GPS wants to go from an input that we put in. And so at that point we know, okay, there's the tack in, that's where we want to go. Depending on what we're doing, we can then you know, adjust the course of the aircraft to then go the right way. Um, okay, so redundancy. Here's the thing, everything I talked about was safety and navigation, that becomes a really big deal. You just can't have one system, right? Because if something goes wrong, and as a pilot you're following that information, uh, who's now to blame, right? So uh, if I crash the aircraft, I'll probably say, well, the information was bad. Um, that may or may not be true. Um, and so in all cases, we have at least dual redundancy, and then for some situations, it's triple redundancy. So the entire system is repeated. And we won't go into that design, but if anyone wants to talk about aircraft design and systems design later, we can do that. Okay, and then the next thing is the difference between high altitude and low altitude. Uh, we're going to talk about 2D and 3D uh, displays here in a minute. Um, that becomes pretty important because at high altitude, it doesn't matter as much if you put your head down in an aircraft, right? Because you've got some time and you've got some space. And so if for some reason you make a bad input or something and you have 30,000 feet, well, you've got 30,000 feet. If you do that at 35 feet, that's a different story, right? So that's when you really want to start talking about heads-up display and how you use 2 and 3D symbology. Okay, so that's me on the right um, in Afghanistan, which is super fun. Uh, maybe that's not how you say that, but um, uh, this we'll talk about real quick combat operations before we get to flight test. Okay, so with combat op operations, um, how do we use AR, right? So we want to lay um, some sort of information onto the environment so that we can usefully use it. So uh, when we talk about why we want to do that, the primary reason is actually ballistic uh, weapons. So a ballistic weapon is something that's not a smart weapon, right? So smart weapon may laser guided, GPS guided, um, what, radar guided. Um, there's a number of, of ways we can, we can guide ordnance. And so in this case with ballistic weapons, which you can think of a round or a rocket, you want to be able to point it at the target and then fire, right? So um, in that case, how are you going to point something at the target? Are you just going to put the nose of the aircraft there? That's not that accurate. There's different height pilots. And so what you do is you create a set of symbology. And if we go back, 
in this case, that small circle there with the lines on each side, so this one right here, that's a weapon symbology. So when I see that and I overlay that on a target, I can now actually shoot and fire and accurately hit the target. We use something called Boresight to make sure that it is accurate and we always test ahead of time to, to verify that. Um, but within this system, also, these three down here as well are for different weapon systems. So every weapon system has a different set of symbology that we use to target. Okay, so other things uh, in combat that we care about being displayed, heads up, is inbound threat. So if someone's firing a missile at me, um, I'll be honest, we have that displayed, uh, a visual um, recognition of an inbound threat followed by a physical input, you are gonna get shot down every time. So that's not the best way, we have it displayed for us, but uh, sound and physical input is far better. And then location of personnel. So we wanna know when we're heads up and we look at our, our display over the earth, where friendly and enemy positions are at. Why? Because when I go to target, I wanna make sure I hit the right target and I definitely don't wanna hit friendly personnel. Okay, so let's talk about flight tests, which I think is a really exciting space uh, that we're moving into in AR, specifically with 3D symbology. Um, and so when I talk about 2D and 3D, um, if you kind of listen to some of the talks in the past two days, a lot of times the 2D would be, I think in some of the, uh, when you, I think the easiest application is like in a car and heads up information comes up and it's just like words printed in a, in a space and you can read it, but it's, a, it's in front of you. That's 2D. 3D is when, uh, it's actually like Wayfair described their couches in that space. That's a 3D set of information that you can, um, you can uh, read. Okay, so, uh, and now we're gonna get into a specific example. Okay, so uh, the Marine Corps, it's not just the Marine Corps, the Army has had this problem as well, crashed a lot of helicopters in the past like 10, 15 years. Um, and the primary causal factor is an air crew's loss of visual reference with the landing environment prior to touchdown. So what that means is specifically with tilt rotor aircraft, so aircraft that start like this and go like this or the opposite way, or helicopters, when they land, they create a huge amount of dust, okay? Dust, dirt, and what happens is the pilot loses visual reference with the ground. Um, and we call that a degraded visual environment, or a DVE. And uh, that's obviously really dangerous, and it's caused 80% of these crashes. So how, as a test pilot, when I know this, what steps do I take to think, this, this is where I came from, in Afghanistan or Iraq or a number of other locations, how do we start to create a solution um, to prevent this, right? So me and a team of engineers, we started coming up with a bunch of ideas and we started shopping the idea around and we actually ended up using um, a company we used before, which actually Dr. Fan talked about yesterday, which is Elbit Systems of America. And uh, it's an Israeli company. And we essentially uh, spent a year or two creating a solution. Okay, so what does the solution look like? It's got 2D and it's got 3D symbology. You can see when we actually lay our grid, um, and we essentially just created a grid, uh, because we want to create a fake environment so that when a pilot loses visual reference on the outside world, they can now use this fake 3D environment to land an aircraft. So this is just an overhead shot. The grid's big, right? Like on the left is a, is a hangar, and you can see two planes there. Those are big planes. Those are not small. So you can see it's a really big space. And the reason is, is that you want to be able to identify the space from a distance, but you also want to be able to use it up close. And what we essentially did is we added fidelity to the pieces of 3D symbology as we got closer. So on the right here, it essentially is in four steps. So from a nautical mile out, and then it steps into point 0.6, and then point 0.2, and then very close into the landing zone. And you can see some of the features. It starts off with a box. It starts off with the landing zone, which is the circle. And then you start adding these uh, stanchions, and they're separated into 20-foot blocks. And all of these, all of this metric, the pilot memorizes what it means. So I have an understanding when I see this grid, what that space is. And you start to learn the grid. So when it's overlaid actually and you're hovering around and flying it, it's like you're flying in a video game, and you start to understand what that grid means. Okay, so this is where it gets cool. Uh, designed a flight test in order to land a helicopter without being able to see outside with 3D symbology overlaid on the environment in front of me. So we came up with two phases. The first phase essentially was verifying the technology, verifying the 3D symbology, making sure that because I'm about to be the one in the front seat flying a helicopter without being able to see outside, that the, that the system and the symbology worked. And then the second phase was actually testing it to see if it was going to be useful and actually help prevent crashes. Okay, so uh, 
this is a lot. Wow, okay, so maybe on the left, just, just look at um, what are the, some of the things we looked at. So flicker, jitter, uh, we want to actually look to make sure that we get the correct symbology, that the control input corresponds to the symbology. We want to just verify all of those things. And then again, so as what, what is it that I'm verifying? I'm verifying all of these items that they correspond to my known aircraft information. So if my aircraft says I'm at 20 feet, that this also says I'm at 20 feet. And then also I have an outside source, so it's triple repeated, or it's, uh, I guess, three times verified. And then what is it that I'm trying to do? Well, I'm trying to land a helicopter. So let's come up with some scenarios on how I'm gonna land this helicopter. So let's do a normal landing. And then I just started getting like, what else can we do? Steep approach, high speed, low level approach, high speed, lower level. <laughs> and I was like, high speed, lowest level? They said, no, that's too much. Um, slow and low, and then also some of the takeoff scenarios as well. And um, at this point, I just set metrics for like what would qualify a safe landing. And then we've got this uh, fun chart, which uh, you can Google. It's our handy qualities chart. And uh, in it, it just helps you as the pilot describe what workload you're putting in to land the helicopter. Because if as a test pilot, I'm supposed to be one of the best pilots, that's what they tell me, it probably isn't true. Um, if I'm able to do it, that doesn't matter. Everybody needs to be able to do it. So I've got to quantify how hard I'm working in order to land the aircraft. And so this is kind of just like a condensed version. Is what does that look like? Well, in a good visual environment, that's about how hard I was working for these types of maneuvers. In the simulated degraded visual environment where I could not see outside but I was using the 3D symbology, you can see it's not the same, but it's not that much worse. Um, so exciting uh, conclusion was I was able to land the helicopter about 20 times without being able to see outside using only 3D AR symbology displayed in front of me. And uh, it was a super wild success and we're currently implementing it into uh, Marine Corps helicopters. Questions?